Any takers on this one? The idea that was said was desmoplastic fibroblastoma, which is actually what this is, or maybe low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma because it's kind of fibrous and it's kind of myxoid. And I think that, that fibroblastic and myofibroblastic entities in soft tissue pathology can actually be quite challenging to learn because for a lot of them, they're composed of fibroblastic cells which are kind of nondescript usually, and then have a variable amount of collagen, sometimes with some myxoid change in the background. And it's really a matter of like, the pattern of how those are arranged with each other and um, and then also some clues like the site and the age and stuff like that and there's a lot of them don't have good special stains to use there are some that do and a lot of them don't have good molecular so it really comes down to a lot of nuanced pattern recognition coupled with some some cheating by using i say cheating but by using the clinical history and the, the site to know so this particular lesion was on the, the palm it was an acral site so i know it's not a the genital stromal tumor angiomyofibroblastoma and those usually have more kind of rounded cells but i find genital stromal tumors actually a very challenging category which is part of why you've not seen me make a youtube video about those because stuff that's difficult i try to avoid making videos about because it's hard and i struggle with it too so um the uh the thing i think that helps the most about these is usually they're composed of one or multiple pretty sharply circumscribed nodules although i've occasionally seen ones that were more loosely arranged um, they often are down in the subcutis or near the tendon. I feel like the majority of the ones that I've seen have been at the distal extremities, like the wrist, the hand, the foot. Um, I think most of the ones I've seen have been there. And uh, they tend to be collagenous in the background, but often have variable amounts of myxoid change, sometimes quite a lot of myxoid change. So I actually chose this case because I feel like more of the, most of the ones I've seen had some or even a lot of myxoid change in them. But I think the best thing, and again, I should have just let Mark Edgar teach you guys this lecture, because yet another thing that he taught me was these cells here, the way he explained them, they're fibroblasts, right? But they look a lot bigger and they're kind of stellate or triangle shaped. You know, stellate means star shaped, but, but when we say that, you know, I never see cells that look like a five point star. They look like kind of squished triangles. So I'm a very concrete thinker. I don't have good abstract thought. That's what my wife tells me. And she's a psychiatrist, so I have to believe her. So in any case, though, I feel like that to me, I want things to look exactly like they're told. But Mark Edgar said what these look like is that these look like splattered cells. Like if you took the fibroblast and you dropped it off the top of a high building and it went splat on the concrete, that's what the cells look like in desmoplastic fibroblastoma. The other name for this entity is collagenous fibroma. And I love that because that's exactly what these cells look like. And even to this day, um, my good colleague, uh, Sarah Shalen from Arkansas, uh, who I worked with for the first eight years of my practice, she and I, she'll be like, oh, hey, this look at the splat cells. So we always just call this, it's the splat cells because that works so well. There are other entities that can have um, these fibroblasts or myofibroblasts with purple, bluish amphiphilic cytoplasm and a kind of stellate look. But when you see that hypocellular lesion, circumscribed lobules, these splattered looking cells, about scattered about on the surface of the tumor, collagenous fibroma or desmoplastic fibroblastoma. And I will point out over here, and although it may cause you anxiety and pain, I should probably tell you there's another tumor that sounds very similar in name to this. It's called a sclerotic fibroma, also known as a story form collagenoma. And why everything has to have at least two names in soft tissue pathology, I don't know. But the problem is, is that uh, story form collagenoma and collagenous fibroma, they sound a lot alike. And for the first few years of my practice, even after doing a fellowship, I won't lie, when I went to sign out one of those entities, I made sure I looked it up to get the name right, okay? So those, those lesions are in the skin and they have a plywood appearance. Uh, very beautiful to look at, but they look quite different than this, but they have a name that sounds similar. So this is the entity sclerotic fibroma uh, AKA plywood fibroma, AKA story form collagenoma. And these uh, were described in Cowden syndrome patients who get multiple lesions like this, but they can also occur sporadically. And um, I think the plywood fibroma name is the most visually appealing because it really does have this cracking wood grained pattern. You can see it's intradermal, it's very sclerotic, and it has these cracks in between the collagen that give it this swirling, whirling kind of plywood um, or wood grained pattern. 
And these are usually circumscribed lesions that are present in the dermis. And you can also see this similar pattern in dermatofibromas. I've seen it in inflammatory settings. So it can be seen in other things. It's not totally specific, but it does look very different than desmoplastic fibroblastoma, aka collagenous fibroma, which is the entity I was just showing you. So I wanted to show you as a comparison, the names are maddeningly similar, but these are very different lesions in their presentation and their appearance. And here's a closer look at that sclerotic kind of plywood pattern and there also. So that is, uh, this, this is sclerotic fibroma or um, story form collagenoma plywood fibroma. Uh, this is totally distinct and different from desmoplastic fibroblastoma, aka collagenous fibroma. You're going to have to practice those names a few times to get it. Like I said, it took me a couple years into practice before I could do it from memory. So um, the these big splatter looking cells, I don't think I've seen in low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma before, but if you had any doubt about low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma, I would never fault someone for doing a uh, MUC4 immunostain, which should be positive in the vast majority of low-grade fibromyxoid sarcomas, but negative in this entity and others, to my knowledge. But, you know, low-grade fibromyxoid does have zones of sclerotic collagen and alternating with zones of more loose kind of myxoid stuff. Um, it usually will have a bit more cellularity than this entity here. But yeah, I would never, I would never fault you for doing a MUC4 Really, on any low-grade fibrous-looking tumor that has some myxoid background, I would always rather people overuse that stain than miss a low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma because they're very treacherous and easy to miss if you have, don't have much experience, and even if you do. Um, and I have a whole long video about low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma, also known as Evans tumor, on my YouTube channel. You can check it out. And I also have a short video that explains real quickly how to tell low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma apart from myxofibrosarcoma, comma, low-grade, because those sound maddeningly similar, but they actually look quite different. So, do you guys love soft tissue pathology yet? I hope so. Because it's so fun once you get really good at it, but the problem is it's all rare and it takes a long time to get comfortable with it because you just don't see this stuff very much. So that's why I'm trying to put more and more slides from my collection out uh, on the internet as whole slide images and make videos so more people can see and learn about this. Okay, any questions? So uh, that's a good question. I feel like the um, the cytology looks different. The, the plump splatter looking cells look different, but the collagen background very much has the shredded carrot kind of look of a plexiform neurofibroma. So yeah, I, that's a good point. I didn't think about that, but these could get confused. And the easy way to solve that would just be doing an S100 or a SOX10, which would label plexiform neurofibroma and be negative um, in this entity. Great question. And these are also benign. Very rarely will they recur, even if the even if they're taken out with positive margins. Although most of them that I've seen kind of shell out like this because they're like sharply circumscribed uh, nodules. So question about extravasated red blood cells. What does it mean? That's a great question. I actually have no idea. I don't know if I've really paid attention to that. And I have to be quite honest. People talk about this as being an important feature, uh, an important feature for nodular fasciitis which there certainly are some areas of this lesion that could look like it because again, fibroblastic and myofibroblastic things often share a lot of overlapping morphology with one another. Um, but um, I, even though it is a common finding in nodular fasciitis, I have never gotten really convinced of the utility or usefulness of that clue. Although I have colleagues who staunchly disagree with me on that and find it to be a very helpful clue. So it may just be that I've not picked up on that nuance yet. Um, I find other things like a little myxoid pseudocyst and, and some stuff like that to help me with nodular fasciitis. But yeah, I don't know why there's extravasated RBCs here. You're definitely right. It's pretty prominent. And I just, I guess I just never paid attention to it. So thank you for bringing that up. Maybe it's a feature that's common in these and I just haven't noticed that yet. So I'll keep a lookout in the future. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the point made is that in fibromatosis, you can have extravasated red cells. And in fact, in fibromatosis, you can have areas that look very much like nodular fasciitis, although it will be that plus the presence of broad sweeping fascicles. But I find particularly intra-abdominal desmoid fibromatoses, I feel like they especially seem to have this very feathery tissue culture look with myxoid backgrounds, and that that's a common, um, a common finding in uh, particularly in the intra-abdominal forms of desmoid fibromatosis. So yeah, definitely. I've had I've had occasional cases where I struggled on a small biopsy to tell something as being nodular fasciitis or desmoid tumor. Um, oftentimes, if you're lucky, you'll get clinical info. And if it's a 10 centimeter mass coming off the rectus abdominis, guess what? It's not nodular fasciitis then. 
So that can be uh, pretty helpful, but other times it can be challenging, particularly like in the breast. I feel like telling a part small fibromatosis versus nodular fasciitis in the breast, I really struggle with that on a few cases.